In two weeks, it will be Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving Sabbath. And I have asked several of you if you would like to play a very important Thanksgiving game with me. Before we read the scripture and I have a message for you, I have $50 bills. See, I got everybody's attention now, right? (laughs) Ten of them. Ten. So, here is the rules of the game. If you are willing, I will give you a $50 bill, but the (laughs) rules of the game are this. You must bless someone with it in the next two weeks and be willing to be here on Thanksgiving Sabbath, that's two weeks from now, and to tell us what happened. You don't have to give a sermon about it. You just have to say, you know, there was this guy and, uh, you know, I decided that I would help him and this is how I helped him and this is what happened. So, I've talked to several of you already. Jace's mom and dad said maybe they would play. Jace, do you want to play with mom and dad? All right. Here we go. Just come on up. There's some of you on the back row there. I I talked to you. Come on now. Come on now. Here. When was the last time somebody gave you 50 bucks in church? I would would imagine I'd have 10 people right now. 10 people. John, you want to play? Okay. You got to be here two weeks from now. That shirt makes me dizzy looking at you. Okay. (laughs) All right, who wants to play? I've got 10. 10 $50 bills. Don't leave me with any. You want to play? Are you going to be? You're not sure if you're going to be here. You've got to be here. You've got to be here two weeks from now. Okay, where's, where's my... All right, Mr. Hinkle. All right, 50 bucks. All right. Would you please make sure that I have your names? Addresses, telephone numbers, and serial numbers after the service. Okay? This is an honorable, this is an honorable thing. You're going you're gonna to take this. This is just, you know, what, what do we call this? What's the proper name for this piece of, actually it's cotton. Did you know that? It's not, it's not paper. <gasps> linen. linen. It's linen. What do we call it? Legal tender. That's right. That's what says I did something and I get something in return so that then I can go and buy from somebody who did something else. I mean, who makes your food? Who, who makes your gas for your car? Who does? This is what goes around. So in actual fact, it's a, it's a piece of someone's life that you're holding in your hand. And in fact, it comes from our church. So it's a piece of our life as a congregation. And what we're asking you 10 people to do is to report to us about how you invested a piece of our life in the community. With whomever you are led to to do this with in the name of Jesus, that you would go and do this. We'll, We'll have a report two Sabbaths from now. Jason? Today's scripture reading is found in Isaiah 53, 3 to 7. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we were healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the inequity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter 
And as a sheep before its shears is silent, so we open not his mouth. I've entitled our time together today very simply, Veterans, Veterans All. And I, I, I just feel convicted to say this to you right off the bat, that that text that you've just heard from Isaiah makes Jesus the most important veteran in our lives. It's Remembrance Day in many parts of the world as well. I want to say hello to our friends in Canada. In fact, my daughter, who is watching right now with my son. And uh, hello, Canada. This day has been set aside to remember those who, who have given service with their lives. We who benefit, we who enjoy the freedoms afforded to us by this great country of ours, are indebted to those who have undertaken the defense of our nation. Today we remember. Don't want to let it pass without thinking about that. Thinking about all those who have now come back. Let's not forget them. There are too many of our friends and neighbors who are forever changed because of where they have been and what they have been asked to do. The fact that they've come back doesn't necessarily mean that they are the same person. So be patient. Be patient with that person who might have a short temper because they've got a lot of depression. Statistics are running pretty high right now of people who have come back from war who end up taking their own lives. We need to be compassionate. We need to be interested and we need to be helping, not just remembering. But today of all days, we salute our veterans and all those who have stood in harm's way for us. And I include in that the military. I include in that the police, the fire, the paramedics, the medics, the doctors, the nurses, Thank you. I know that we have a number of individuals in our congregation who have served. Mostly, I think, our biggest representation, including uh, a certain Frank that always gives me a lifesaver for Sabbath morning. He's a Navy man. He knows how to throw a ring to save somebody. So he saves all of you from my halitosis every Sabbath. Thank you. Thank you for that. Let us for a moment think about the word veteran. It's something that we remember at this time of year, and it's something that I think we, we should think a little bit more about today. A veteran is, by general definition, a person with a long experience in a particular field. That's what we think of, or that is the general definition of veteran. We could say Seasoned makes me think of a pile of wood, you know, something that's been cut, placed, and left to dry out. How about a better one? Expert. A a, a veteran is an expert because of time spent. Uh, I like the next one. Uh, Adept. Somebody who is An adept, because it's something you can be, is somebody who knows a lot about a particular thing. Uh, You could say Bunny Thornburg is an adept when it comes to music. We, I think, all know that and love her for that. For today's meaning, though, we turn to military as a veteran, as one who has been poured, poured into a useful mold and hardened. This word hardened brings to mind uh, the, the, the difference between hard and soft. When you reach Camp Lejeune, when you reach Paris Island, when you reach these centers of, of manufacture, as you, as you might want to think of them, you have individuals who come in soft and they leave hard. 
They leave as, 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 a, as a person who has a dog tag. And it has a number on it. And they have been taught to tell only that number to their captors. If ever they get captured, they don't tell them their name. They don't tell them anything except that they are that number. Because they, at that point, have become a piece of the military-industrial complex known as government issue. That is why we called and still call people who are in the military GI. Didn't think about it until a few years ago, but every piece of material that is used in the military has a number so that it can be cataloged, so that they can track it, so that they know what's happening with whatever they have. And so it is with those individuals who are part of the military. Military strategies from, from time immemorial t- until now uh, need warriors. They need warriors, even though much more is being done now with computers and drones. The human soldier is still essential to any military. So our country still has a military. We can't do without individuals being part of the military. We, we are training people to be and to do so that our country can continue to be safe. But ponder with me on this Veterans Day. Is America a country or an idea? I say it's an idea that has become a country. What our veterans fought and died for was the preservation of a place on earth where the ideas and ideals that our country was formed upon might still exist. One nation under God. This is why I salute our veterans. They gave all so that we might still have a home amongst the free, where there is freedom to speak, where there is freedom to worship, where there's Freedom to love and be loved. One nation under God. This is the declaration that cannot be forgotten. It's tough for me at this time of year, even when I talk to you about Thanksgiving, it's tough for me to see that our nation has decided to go straight from Halloween to Christmas. You thought about that? What's missing in between? Thanksgiving. One nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. If you care to take your bulletin home as a memento of your occasion of being with us here today, just understand that that is why I made, well, asked Amy to do the artwork on the front of it. If you look at your bulletin, you'll see what I mean. For the native peoples and for the immigrant, of which I am one, the vast expanses of this country have and still inspire a connection to God. Travel across this land by car or by train and you will feel small. You just can't help it. This is a vast country. The enormity of this country, the diversity of the terrain and the topography never cease to amaze and inspire. People from all over the world come to this country because there are things in this country that you can't see anywhere else in the world. There is room in this country to think. There is room in this country to dream. There is room in this country to grow. One nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. There's no place like this nation of ours on earth because it has a perspective about humanity like no other. 
Billions, I tell you, billions of people wake up morning after morning with a dull ache in their hearts. They long for what all humanity was created to have, life, liberty. We say the pursuit of happiness, but this morning I would, I would put an and by that, and I would say, and a deep spiritual fulfillment. There's a longing, I believe, in billions of hearts for a deep spiritual fulfillment a relationship with the divine, a connection with the universe, to know one's place in time and space and to contribute to the greater whole. In other words, to have meaning as an individual. The idea of a place where one can work, play, love, enjoy in freedom, this is not where billions live today. But because of the few, the many can enjoy this in the United States of America. So I say, God bless America. I believe God has blessed America. I believe God is blessing America. I believe God has has a promise and a, and a purpose for America. I believe that now is our turn to be American. Our history tells us that there were lots of other people who were Americans, but we weren't alive then. We're alive now. So it's our turn to be American. It's our turn to be one nation under God, with liberty and justice for all. And we should be indivisible. We should be indivisible from these ideas. Liberty and justice for all. People died, my friends. People died to keep us together, to keep us free, to keep us loving each other. People died for that. So it's our turn. It's our turn to honor them by being the Americans that we were created to be. That's the speech. Now for the text. Romans chapter 11. You can open your Bibles. You can pull out your phones. I'll even let you do it electronically because I trust you not to go onto Facebook, even though I know you will. Because you want to know what other people are doing. But Romans, Romans chapter 11, Rabbi Paul uses an analogy that brings into focus the calling of a nation into existence. As we remember the fact that there are people who have died to keep this nation free, we have to ask ourselves, why was this nation called into existence? And was there another before it? Was there a reason why that nation was called into existence? Why have we been called into existence at this time? Why am I here? Is one of the big questions each and every one of us has to answer. Rabbi Paul uses this analogy when God calls Abraham. Abraham's offspring become a people that God keeps his promise to. They take possession of a land that God said would be theirs forever. A land where he would be their God and they would be his people. Now that's a summation of most of the New Testament, excuse me, the Old Testament right there. All of the, the, the books of Moses and the Exodus and then the retaking of, of uh, uh, the land of Canaan with Joshua, that's, a, that's all summed up right there. And ultimately, this people were to be one nation under God, indivisible with his liberty and his justice. Ah, but they came to Samuel that day. And they said, Samuel, Samuel. We want a king. 
We want a king. Not to go too far down that lane, but God listened, even though it really made Samuel upset. God listened and he said, okay, I'm going to give you a king, but there's going to be a price to pay because you have a king. Can you imagine our forebears in America saying, we don't want a king? (laughs) Kind of went the other way, didn't we? And in our declaration here, we said, we will be one nation under God. Very interesting that Israel would go one way and that America would go the other. But uh, some of us might wonder whether it's still true today when we go straight from Halloween to Christmas and we skip Thanksgiving. All the other peoples of the earth, the Bible says, were to be blessed by this people. And ultimately, I believe all the peoples of the earth have been blessed because you see, Jesus came as an Israelite. So you could, you, you, you could say, well, have the Jewish people or have the Israelite people blessed everybody in the world? Yes, they have. Because Jesus came, and because he came and has offered salvation to all through this people, you could say that that prophecy has come true. The Savior of the world came into the world as part of this particular special people who God had called to act a special part in history. Rabbi Paul likens Israel in this chapter in Romans 11 to a cultivated olive tree. See, olives are giving their olives right now. How do I know this? Because every time I go in through the gate of my community, there are two olive trees right there and they're dropping, they're dropping their olives right now. I went to a wedding uh, uh, in, in near Loma Linda and Cherry Valley last weekend on Sunday and there were people out in the olive groves picking olives with those, you know, they, they shake the trees and they put the, the sheets underneath and they they get the olives so olives are being harvested right now he likens those paul does who are not israelites to the wild olive trees he's very observant to the to point out that a branch from the wild olive tree can be grafted in to the cultivated olive tree now what is what is he what is he what is he trying to tell us here? The wild olive branch produces. He's being very careful. He's talking to his people now because you see he's the he's the pro, he's he's the evangelist to the Gentiles. He's saying you're the wild olive. You're the wild olive, and 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 you want to be grafted in, but you want to be grafted into the old olive tree. Because when the old olive tree sends its sap. Through you, you will, you will live and you will, you will bear fruit. The branch cannot support the root. Don't think, he says, don't think that because you are, that you don't need the root. Okay? You're thinking, wow, what, what, what does this have to do with Remembrance Day? What does this have to do with, with Veterans Day? It's quite simple, folks. We cannot be who we are today if we forget where we came from and who it was that has given us life. In the same way, spiritually speaking, if we forget that all of us, remember the text that, J- that Jason read, all we like sheep, this is another analogy, but all we like wild olive trees have gone astray. We, we are not part of the family. We've gone our own way. And I would say that in that sense, we have all experienced what it's like to be in opposition to God. You could say, because of our experience, we are all veterans of sin now i don't know that i 
I really like that thought. I, I, I've had that thought this week as I've been preparing, and I, I'm not sure that I want to be thought of as a veteran of sin. But that's what I am. That's what Isaiah 53 tells me. I'm a wild olive, says Paul. You're not part of this people that, that God called in the beginning. You are this other people, and, and, and the only way that you're going to survive is not by being a, a wild olive anymore, but you're going to survive by being grafted into the original, by becoming knowledgeable, by, becoming, by spending time with and, and being connected to the original stem, the original trunk of the tree. And in so doing, his sap will flow through you and the fruit that you produce will be to his glory and to, 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 to the feeding of the nations around. I, I, I want to be known. I want to be known as a veteran of a relationship with Jesus Christ. I want to be known as one who accepted the opportunity to be grafted in so that now I'm part of this larger thing that God is doing in the world today. I would love to know that the America that we are part of today has people in it who still believe that we can be and are best as Americans when we are connected to God. That we still want to be one nation under God. Not divided from Him. Not divided from each other. But that we would all be veterans. People who know a lot. People who, who are adepts. People who, who are, are experts at knowing what it's like to be together. To be connected to God. This is the kind of veteran that I want to be. This is the kind of veteran that I'm you know, offering that you and I become together here in America as we enjoy the freedom to become anything that we would like to be. Amen? That's what we love about America. We can be anything we want to be. But I'm asking that this, this congregation consider that to be the best American that we can be, we have to be connected to the God of heaven, who I believe called upon people to formulate this nation so that it could be a beacon of hope, just like Lady Liberty in, in New York Harbor, that it could be a beacon of hope to the billions of people around the world, like I said, who wake up every morning wishing that they could have the life, the liberty, and the ability to pursue the happiness that they think about, but are unable to do that because they don't live in America. So I want to personally thank the veterans that are in this congregation. I asked several of them if they wanted to stand. They said no. But I still want to thank you. I also want to thank each and every one of you who has decided to be a veteran of the kingdom of heaven because you are going to go back out these doors in a few moments. You're going to go into this next week and your metal is going to be tried and you're going to be seeing whether or not your relationship with God is stiff and hard and ready for the battle or whether or not you are still soft and easily taken. I pray that each and every one of you will trust in Jesus and that you'll be grafted in like no other time in your life. Amen.